So here in this video we will assess the speed of dragons in the House of the Dragon series, something which is pretty damn hard to do. For this, we will take a look at 4 dragons that were seen flying in the series. The ones with a fixed shot or a good background as to get a good reference for distance. These 4 dragons would be Vagar, Moondancer, Sunfire and Melees. We will take a look at the distance they cross and the time it took for them to cross that distance. And then with a bit of math as was taught in school, we will extract the speed. So let's get to it. Starting with Serial Killer Grandma which is Vagar, the oldest and largest dragon in Westeros as of that time in the Dance of the Dragons. She is estimated to be around 76.2 meters or 250 feet long in the series. In the scene where Aemon claims Vega just outside of Driftmark in the first season, we get a very cool scene of Vega flying in the sky with the moon in the background. So this is a fixed shot. In this scene, we calculated that Vega crossed a distance of 122 meters in just 2.07 seconds. This translates to a raw speed of 59 meters per second which is roughly 212 kilometers per hour, meaning 132 miles an hour. Considering Vega's immense size and age, this is an impressive speed. However, with greater exertion of energy, Vega's top speed might reach 250 kilometers per hour or 155 miles an hour, making her a formidable force in the sky despite her old age of 181 years. Now going to the second dragon. In Season 2 Episode 3, we get to see Moon Dancer dive bombing from the clouds to attack Sir Kristen Cole and the other knights of the Greens. Here we get a chance to calculate her speed with relative to the open ground. Moon Dancer is a smaller dragon with an estimated length of 18 meters or 60 feet long. Despite her size, Moon Dancer proves to be incredibly agile. During a chase sequence involving Sir Kristen Cole, she covers 72 meters in 1.15 seconds. This gives her a speed of 62.6 meters per second or approximately 225 kilometers per hour or 140 miles an hour. Moon Dancer's speed here is measured after she had lost some acceleration, suggesting that in optimal conditions, such as in higher altitudes, she could likely reach speeds of 250 to 300 kilometers per hour or between 155 and 186 miles an hour. This could potentially apply to the other smaller dragons like the Sarion and Vermax who are though nimble but still lack enough wingspan and muscle power to push them over the edge in speed. The third dragon is Sunfire and in the fourth episode of season 2 which is aptly called Rook's Rest, we get to see Sunfire flying across the sky in the background whilst Aemon and Vega were about to take off in the ground. Here we examine Sunfire, a dragon known for his golden scales and beauty as well as being the royal dragon of King Aegon II. With an estimated length of around 27 meters or 90 feet long, Sunfire is shown rushing into battle at Rook's Rest, covering 207 meters in just 2 seconds. Exactly. This remarkable feat translates to a speed of 103.5 meters per second or a blistering 372 kilometers per hour or 231 miles an hour. No doubt this is Sunfire's top speed as in this moment the dragon and his rider were under the urgency to reach the field of battle to counter melees at top speed. And yeah, lastly we turn to Melees, the Red Queen, who was renowned for being the fastest and swiftest dragon alive during the Dance of the Dragons and maybe even the fastest ever. The scene we get to measure is one of her during the escape from the Dragon Pit in Season 1. Melees, of course, is estimated to be around 45 meters or 150 feet long. In a scene where she takes off from the dragon pit, she covers 315 meters in just 4.06 seconds, achieving a speed of 77.5 meters per second or approximately 280 kilometers per hour, meaning 174 miles an hour. This impressive takeoff speed hints at an even greater potential top speed, likely around twice that or maybe less than twice, which will either way put her top speed at around 500 kilometers per hour or 310 miles an hour, further solidifying Melee's reputation as the fastest dragon of her time and maybe ever. Now expanding beyond the four dragons, we can draw comparisons to others mentioned in the lore. Cyrax for instance is said to be faster than Vagar, suggesting that Cyrax's speed likely falls between 300 to 350 kilometers per hour or between 186 and 217 miles an hour. This estimate could also apply to Sea Smoke, a dragon of similar age, size and build. 
Caraxes, also known as the Blood Worm, is another dragon that was able to keep up with and even catch Vagar in midair, indicating a comparable speed range. Younger dragons like Arax are noted for their speed and agility, particularly in comparison to the larger dragons like Vagar. However, they are small, and although they might look to be speedy or swift, they do cover less distance as due to their size. And in poor weather conditions, Arax was unable to outfly Vagar, though it is estimated that his speed could exceed 250 to 260 kilometers per hour, or between 155 and 161 miles an hour, under normal conditions. Then finally, we consider Vermithor and Silverwing, two large and bulky dragons that, while slower than the smaller and nimbler dragons, could still outpace Vagar. Their estimated top speeds are maybe around 300 kilometers per hour making them powerful yet slightly less agile than their smaller counterparts. Now let's go through geography for a while. According to George R. R. Martin himself, Westeros, including the area north of the wall, is roughly the size of South America, stretching approximately 3,000 miles or 4,828 kilometers from the southern tip of Dawn to the wall and beyond. The continent spans around 3,000 miles or 4,828 kilometers from north to south, and around 900 miles or 1,448 kilometers at its widest point from east to west. This means that Dragonstone, the island fortress of House Targaryen, an island off the coast of Westeros, is approximately 400 miles or 643 kilometers from King's Landing, the capital of the Seven Kingdoms. So in the world of ice and fire, there is a passage detailing the formation of a peace treaty between Dawn and the Iron Throne, where it is said, Aegon read upon the Iron Throne, and men say that when he rose, his hand was bleeding, so hard that he clenched it. He burned the letter and departed immediately for Dragonstone. When he returned the next morning, he agreed to the peace and signed a treaty to that effect. This passage indicates that Aegon was able to travel from King's Landing to Dragonstone and back within a single night. Given this information, our earlier estimates for dragon speed are likely quite accurate. With a cruising speed of around 200 km per hour, a large dragon like Vagar, Vermithor or Beleriand the Black Dread could easily and reasonably cover the distance between King's Landing and Dragonstone in about 3 to 4 hours. This reinforces the idea that dragons, with their immense power and speed, were invaluable assets for the Targaryens, capable of quickly bridging the vast distances of Westeros in a very short amount of time, while other armies or travelers would take weeks or months to reach their destination. And so that's all that we have on the speed of dragons in the House of the Dragon and the Game of Thrones franchise. Now, if you like this video, then watch this other one too, and do check out our channel for other dragon and monster content. We might have things we haven't seen before. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.